how did I become a feminist? I think it was impossible to both spend time in France, which is quite a patriarchal country, very rooted in Latinate ideas of seduction and galanterie, and also impossible to spend time at Cambridge and at Cambridge University, which is another very different but also quite patriarchal context without becoming conscious of the ways that women are um, exploited and undermined both on an everyday but also academic and intellectual level. My feminism isn't necessarily a feminism that attaches too strongly to the category of women or womanhood or femininity per se, but it's a feminism that mobilizes against domination and violence, which is obvious, often being coded as masculine. It's a feminism which has an appetite for life and excess and desire and sexuality at the same time. It's also at the same time a function of patriarchy to tell women that their femininity is too much or that any display of excess or indeed luxury or glamour is, is a distraction from women's reproductive function as wives and mothers. The etymology of luxury comes from many things, but also from the Italian luctari, which means a dislocation or a perversion from the norm. So a kind of bending away from normativity, which is where I see luxury's queer potential as a perversion of the normal, a perversion of a decorous, straight, contained and good femininity, right? Why not embrace the decadent, the glamorous, the, the superfluous as a way of not conforming to patriarchal straight jackets and accepted modes of being? There's also a key point to this, which is that a luxury that's just about self-fashioning or self-affirmation or empowerment through the acquisition of um, commodities or capitalist signifiers, which is very much not the vision of luxury that I'm trying to advance because I think there's what we really want to look at via this becoming excessive, becoming decadent, is ways that we can be decadent together. It's a sharing of sensibilities. It's multi-sensuality and festivity. So it's about a luxury that, that kind of burgeons out, that flowers in all directions and that encompasses different subjectivities and different women but also different forms of life and it's not quite luxury communism per se which is um, another title of a book a very interesting book about how we should abolish capitalism completely and that this idea of a universal pooling and sharing of resources um, and the and getting rid of work per se is a different alternative form of luxurious life. It's not quite that, but it is very much about feminist subjectivities taking pleasure in sharing their work and in mutual inspiration and in reverence before the feminists that have come before and the feminists that are going to follow. There's also something 
in getting rid of the male gaze and that the, the luxury of um, seclusion and retreat and time to contemplate and time to immerse both in the process of making art but and producing it but also in the process of consuming it and of being wrapped and rapture and it goes back I suppose to Monique Vitig and her ideas of luxurious hermeticism away from the gaze of men and away from the grip of men and I do think there is such resonance and truth in her statement that there are no straight women only oppressed ones the exhale that comes from being in and amongst women or being in, am in and amongst feminists and women however that term is defined not necessarily just cis women but there is that luxurious exhale I think on being just emancipated from that from that very quantitative male gaze when I've when I've been here I've been thinking a lot about urbanity and how we do create those spaces outside of the male gaze that feel luxuriant luxuriant and decadent and creative that aren't at the same time about commodifying this idea of non-mixité you know and this women together empowered women together and making it I guess a bit unrulier and a bit messier um, which is very difficult in a gentrified globalized world <laughs>